I don't know what I went for all right there, and I said oi oi instead. And I'm, <laughs> so I'm really nervous, and I've had one and a bit cider, so this should be fun. Woo! So this is the dating game. Uh, I also don't have a script, and I haven't got any notes, so we're just gonna fucking wing it. Dating game, how video games saved my life. What it actually is, is a series of thoughts that were kind of interconnected through, a ser through years of my life, as I have T tried to find someone to love me, which I eventually have. So that's good. Um, that's a blurry picture of her there. She's called Rhiannon. That's the only picture you'll see of her. That's a picture of me. She had a selfie stick and I was just waving it around. So why should you give a shit about me? Uh, I'm the news editor of PocketGamer.biz. That doesn't really help. Like two people wooed. Uh, does anyone know the game I Cheated On You? It was a twine game about... Nope, fucking hell. Well, I made that. Uh, people have written articles in books about it, which is bizarre, but cool. Uh, I've been on at least two dates, although as you'll see, I've actually been on three. And uh, I haven't given a PowerPoint presentation since my second year in uni, so this is going to be fun. So, this all started because I think dating advice for nerds, as I'm just going to colloquially call all of you, uh, I hope you don't mind, nerds, geeks, gamers, whatever you want to call yourselves, dating advice is shit. Um, if you type in dating tips for nerds, you'll find a vast variety of things. Ten, tip, ten dating tips for the lonely nerd. Um, that one was a joke, but the rest of it is taking itself a bit too seriously. It doesn't offer any advice on first dates, which I think is kind of dumb. It's always, now you bagged yourself a nerd, what do you do now? How do you keep them interested? And it also, it usually goes after the guys and girls dating guys and says, don't be like the other girls because all girls are horrible and mean and bitchy, which is the fucking stupidest thing I've ever heard in my entire life. But that's the state of it. That is the state of the date. So I went through some of these things just to reaffirm my doubts about the advice. Uh, yep, yeah, so, so the many nerds grew up suffering at the hands of dumb jocks or bitchy mean girls. So you should tell your boyfriend nerd that he's awesome exactly the way he is. Is he smart, computer savvy, well employed, or good in the sack? I hope you don't know this on the first date. Actually, no, that's really stupid. I hope you don't know it as soon as you meet him. You go up to him and you say, oh, are you good in the sack? Wow, this is why I was single for so long. Second one, it was a junior high crush and I spent at least three to four hours watching him play the video game Final Fantasy X, which really should have been your first sign that this was not going to end well. They're actually still together. She felt like she was in a love triangle. The triangle between him, myself, and the latest installment of Halo. Again, probably a bad idea. Uh, and this was my absolute favorite one. Use the microphone wisely from Seven Tips for Dating a Nerd, which highlight, if I highlight, if your hashtag boyfriend lets you talk on the microphone, lets you talk on the microphone, while you're playing, avoid flirting with other guys. Because of course you're going to do that. You're just sat there watching him play fucking Guild Wars or whatever, and you're just like, hey lads, How's it going? <laughs> Rhiannon then told me when I showed her this slide that actually she used to chat to one of her ex-boyfriend's friends on Skype, and he eventually banned her from doing so because he thought she was, he was going to steal her away. They were just Skype friends. Fuck it. Men are awful. So anyway, my, my, my idea is that on first dates you should probably not just talk about games, but play games. Games are fun. They're awesome. They inspire cooperation or competition, which is good. Uh, it's social engagement. You're supposed to socially engage with someone. You're supposed to have fun with people when you're on dates. I think you're supposed to have fun when you're with people on dates and not just sit across from each other and talk about the fucking weather or whatever. But, you know, that's me. And I always find, personally, it reduces the kind of pressure of being on a date. It reduces anxiety of being on a date because it is kind of awkward when you just sat there across from someone you've never met before. Um, and if you've got something that can just divert your focus away from the whole terrible stuff, it's great. Um, it has been done before. Other people have done this. There is Fingle, um, which is a game where you or play on iPad and you push your fingers together and it's supposed to make you nice. It was an IGF finalist and uh, they also have the beautiful thing of two people actually had sex after playing it and then went to Game Oven Studio and said, by the way, we had sex after playing your game. So... Nice. And of course, it was, <laughs> it was written about in, uh, in Bed With Games by the wonderful Cara Ellison, which is a fantastic book if you've not read it. Um, that's one of my major inspirations for this kind of thing. Another inspiration as well, which kind of kick-started my memory about all this, was uh, the wonderful article by Cat Brewster in The Guardian, which is, what is it like to date someone you met playing Pokemon Go? If you've not read it, I highly recommend it. It's a brilliant article. It's very funny. And it also is her going on a first date with someone she met playing Pokemon Go, and they go and play Pokemon Go together, and it ends okay. It's, uh, it's a nice little story. I, I don't know how it ends, but you know. 
But what about me, the most important part of this talk? Someone who wrote an entire slide deck just so he could talk about dates that he went on. Because I'm a narcissist. Date one in my little stream of thought. So the first time I had an idea that I was going to go on a date with a girl, I was going to bring out a laptop and I was going to play a game with her. Um, that's a terrible idea and don't ever do it. So we went to Go Burrito in Lancaster, if anyone's been. No? Good. Lancaster, best burrito place in the world, particularly in the north. I would highly recommend it. And I, I thought, let's go meta. Let's go interesting. Let's play Save the Date. If you've not played Save the Date, by the way, fucking play it. It's absolutely fantastic. Um, it involves going on a date and then repeating dates over and over again. I won't spoil it for anybody. You should play it. So we went to this place. We went and had a burrito. I then realized that eating burritos with a laptop out is a terrible idea because burritos are very messy and everything will get sticky and horrible. Um, so I, I kind of waited a bit, and I hadn't told her that I was going to play a game. So after we just finished eating our burritos, I kind of turned to her and went, now I'd like to try a little something, and just pulled out a fucking laptop. A massive old thing. It was the cheapest thing that I could buy. It was a refurbished thing from PC World that I got in my second year of uni, and I just banged it on the table, and I was like, right, we're going to play a game together, and it's a dating game. Thankfully, she's a Let's player. And she loved it, and she started playing it, and she started talking me through it. And we were both very awkward, so it was nice to reduce the anxiety. She started speaking more. I was enjoying listening to her speak. Ended up being quite a nice date, so one point for me. So lessons learned. Burrito's amazing. <laughs> that relationship did not end well. Burritos are amazing, but bad for laptops. Let's players talk more when playing a game. Who knew? And uh, being meta is amazing. You should just always be meta. Date two, Neko Atsume came out a couple of years ago. I became fucking obsessed with it. It's fantastic. It's you get little cats and you get them toys and you, oh. there is a, there is a video of me online, half drunk, for for work, saying, "Oh my god, I love Neko Atsume because I didn't know how to pronounce it at the time," and just rambling on about how much I love cats. Um, so I got chatting to a girl on Tinder and we were talk, talking about what what do we like, and I was like, "Oh, I like cats," and she's like, "Oh, I like cats," and I was thinking, Neko Atsume, this this could work well. I can whip this out, this will be fun. So we went to House of Trembling Madness in York, if anyone's been. Nope. This is very northern focused, I don't come down south very often. <laughs> uh, this is a tiny little bar, that's me, that's my mate Joe, that's not the girl I was doing. Um, very, very small, very intimate setting. Don't go to Trem House of Trembling Madness for a date, it is the worst place in the world. We were sat at the bar, and uh, yeah, it was just really awkward. And you know, we were chatting for a bit, and I turned to her and went, oh, have you heard about Neko Atsume? Reaching into my pocket to pull out my iPad, which was not an easy feat to do. And she said, yes, but I got bored of it really quickly and I deleted it. And I went, fuck. That date did not go very well. It all kind of... So yeah. First thing, don't make assumptions about your dates. Don't assume that they're not going to know about video games. I'm a fucking idiot. I just assumed, you know, not everyone's going to know about Neko Atsume, it's a game about cats, who gives a shit? And yeah, I swear so much, I'm sorry. Carrying an iPad in your coat pocket is an absolute pain, trying to get it out in a smooth fashion is also painful, particularly when it's just massive, and tiny bars make for awkward first dates, as I'm sure I've mentioned. Now, we get to the crux of my thoughts. This is where everything changes once again, because my mind just is idiotic. So, this involves three games, and I note Tinder here as a game, as I will explain later. A Telfall Boyfriend from Pidgeon Nation, Tinder, and Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney, which for the past year has been the one thing that has held my relationship together. So this is how I met Rhiannon, and we went on a date to Evil Eye. I will build up the details as we go. This is a picture of me with my Hatoful Boyfriend body pillow. <laughs> I spent far too much money getting this. So you had to get the, the pillowcase separate as part of a humble bundle deal. And then I waited a couple of years with it in my drawer and eventually went and bought a body pillow, which is another 20 quid. Altogether, that cost about 50 quid. And I used it to take it to my family's house for Christmas dinner, <laughs> which, again, did not go down well. So there's a picture of me with my Myrtle for Point for Bonnie Pillow. I, just, I told my parents I was bringing a date home. They didn't realize it was a man who was also a pigeon. Um, I was nearly kicked out. Thanks, Dad. Um, and eventually, so this is a picture that my sister took, and I used it as a Tinder profile, and I put the description as, I'm the one on the left. <laughs> Got a couple of laughs. That's good. Rhiannon, who is my girlfriend, as previously stated, in case anyone's forgotten, um, saw this and thought, oh, that's funny. I will swipe right to this person. Our first talk was about facades. It was the stupidest thing in the world. But what she did reveal to me is that Tinder is the biggest video game ever. 
because it's got millions of players and everyone's playing by their own rules and it's very, very interesting. So this is the gamification of dating. Dating now is a game. It's on your phones, you can play it whenever you like, you can go wherever you want, and you can pay money for it as well. It's fantastic. It comes with a set of arbitrary rules. You've got a basic choice mechanic, you can swipe left or right if you want to not talk to someone or talk to someone. You've got a limited number of turns, Turn, there, turns, which is a swipe limit, which you, know, you can pay for more, but who pays for apps? And it's got linguistic choices within the game. It says keep playing. You know, it doesn't tell, it, tell you to talk to someone else. It says keep playing this game. It is a game. But then you've also got house rules on top of that. So you can play easy mode, as I dubbed it, where you always swipe right, which is not a good idea. Um, just don't do it. You guess, it's just pointless. Why would you bother? Uh, you can self-inflict restrictions. You can make it harder for yourself. You can say, oh, I'll only swipe right if they have a picture in which they're covered in blood, which is a fantastically fun rule, and I highly recommend everyone does it. Great around Halloween, not so great around every other time. And it's also got a bunch of meta games that you can involve. And this is where Rhiannon came in fantastically useful for this talk. Because she has a shitload of rules on how to play Tinder. Her flat had the Tinder alphabet, where you have to date a man. They were all white, um, bleh, straight women. You have to date a man whose name begins with the different letters of the alphabet. So you collect them all. You get an A, a B, a C, and so on. If Once you get all 26, you win. Although they were doing it as kind of a house collective. I think they got to about 18. Um, now they're all just kind of they've moved away from each other and they're no longer doing it. But I think that was quite a score. I was the third R they'd collected, so my role was pointless. In me <laughs> I really don't know how we stayed together. They also had separate goals as well, little, little objects of side quests. Get a Tinder man to take you to hospital is one that they actually ac accomplished, which was not a fun night for anybody involved. Get a Tinder man to buy you broccoli because you just have to get them to buy you something really weird and bizarre. And triple date, which was how we met, where they said, we have to go on a date with three guys in the same place at the same time and just all sit at the same table and have a date together with no one knowing that that's what you're supposed to be doing, apart from me because she told me all about it and I said, fucking hell, that sounds amazing, I'm doing that. In the end, it didn't happen. We all went to separate places in Evil Eye. It's got three floors, we're all on separate floors. It wasn't as fun as it should have been, but I got chatting to her about Phoenix Wright, and we've been together ever since and playing all the Phoenix Wright games together. We're finally on the last one. We're on the last case. I'm so close to finishing it. It's been my life. I'm so sick of it. <laughs> Actually, I love it, Ryan, and I love it. So. Other apps have noticed this. They've decided to try, as you get with clones, there are clones and they try and come out with new ideas. It's the diversification of, of the gamification of datification, as I decided to call it on a train journey when I was writing this. So if you've not heard about dating apps, I, I don't know your knowledge of these things. There's many, 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 many. Uh, the notable ones that I thought of were Bumble, in which the you, everyone swipes but only the women are allowed to initiate conversations. If they don't initiate a conversation within the first 24 hours, you lose the match forever. There's once that actually has matchmakers working on the game, but you only get one match a day. Um, apparently, it's not very good, because you don't really get to know anybody. And there's a new one called Hater, which is starting to make the rounds where you're matched based on things that you hate, um, which apparently is working. People are enjoying that, who knew? Um, but Tinder will always reign supreme. However, my favorite one of the lot, which is where gamification goes wrong, is date play, which one, has a fucking awful name. Two, um, is any, did anyone watch The Apprentice? You may remember date play being th something that they advertised that, that actually was a winning idea on The Apprentice. I think like two years ago, it took so long to make. It had all this potential. It was going to be a dating app where you play games with people. It was finally my thing. It was the beautiful thing that I've been waiting for so long. And it launched on F Valentine's Day. And all it is is a quiz game where you get four choices and it asks you questions like, who's your favorite politician? Trump, Boris Johnson, Angela Merkel, or Putin? <laughs> and so on and so forth in a similar vein. No one is using it. I downloaded it out of interest. Rhiannon also downloaded it. You can see part of her face there. Um, oh, I didn't mention I had a picture of my dad in here. Never mind. <laughs> You're probably all weirded out by that. I did try and talk to someone about their thoughts on video games. Three days went by and they didn't respond, so that didn't work. It got to the point where the CEO of the company, the winner of The Apprentice, sent me a message saying, Hey, Rick, sticky out tongue face, we both like sweets. Thumbs up emoji. I eventually got her email. <laughs> because I said that Rian was a big fan and she gave me her email. I ruined my own joke. I'm sorry. So... This has been just a wild ride through gamification of datification. 
and these are my conclusions. You should talk about games on the first date. You should not wait to tell anybody that you are a nerd. Embrace it. Games are wonderful. You should play games on a first date. Don't play the obvious ones. Whip out something that no one's going to think thought of. You can do something that is stupid. Dating apps are silly. Dating is silly. Everything is stupid. Have fun with it. It is so much more fun to go into a date and say, I'm going to do something daft today, rather than going into it and say, I want to find the love of my life. Just go in, go in and say, here, let's play a game about pigeons or something. Um, and also buy a total boyfriend to be because they're amazing people know they're expensive. Those are my contact details. I don't sure no one gives a shit. But uh, thank you very much for taking my time.